Welcome to all of you this morning. My name is Reverend Lauren Radzik, and I am one of the pastors here. We are so glad that you have joined us for worship this morning. Today, our Minister of Congregational Care is away. You can see he's not in his normal spot in the front row. But we do invite you to continue to share your prayer requests with us. Prayer requests will take place a lot earlier in today's service. We've got a different order of worship. So if you are here in person and you have a prayer request to hand to me, please do so during the first hymn. If you are joining us online, please put those in Facebook chat now so that we can care for those. But don't worry if we don't read it out loud today. We will still collect all of those requests in person and online, share them and pray over them this week, and share them in our Friday emails. Friends, please take a moment and let us know that you are here worshiping with us today. We love to connect with you. If you're here in person, that means that there are pew pads on the ends of the aisles. Please take them, fill them out, and pass them to your neighbors, ensuring that they end up on the aisles. And if you're joining us online, we would love for you to please let us know on Facebook who you are and where you are watching from today. As you can see, Vacation Bible School is upon us, and it begins tonight. This year, we're having a food truck party and invite all kids preschool to sixth grade to join us at 530. And if you are available to help set up for VBS, especially with tables and chairs following worship today, we would love that, and Kathy would be your best friend forever. So if you have a few moments after worship today to meet in the fellowship hall and to follow Kathy's directions for tables and chairs, we would thank you in advance for doing that. Next Sunday, July 24th, we will continue our VBS fun for worship. Next week, we'll gather to learn from our children and our youth as we review the theme and lessons of the week, sing VBS songs, and share in the joy of God's love. Following worship next week, we will provide hamburgers and condiments and drinks and paper products, but we ask that you bring yourself and a side dish or a dessert to share as we celebrate with a potluck. And there'll be an ice cream truck, so you won't want to miss it. Friends, there's a lot going on here at the United Methodist Church in Macedonia. We encourage you to mark your calendars for the end of August. For all the things that are in your bulletin and in your Friday emails, those emails contain all kinds of important things. So if you're not receiving them and you would like to, let us know in the office. But on Rally Day, which is August 28th, we'll be making our official switch from 9.30, which we are now, and until then, to 10 o'clock for service. That's August 28th. So we give you thanks for marking your calendars. We give you thanks for planning to be here with us at 9.30 through the rest of July and the beginning of August and August 28th at 10 o'clock. Friends, we invite you following worship after you're done setting up tables and chairs to please join us in the Holbrook Room for coffee and cookies and fellowship where we can continue to talk and share with one another. Welcome to worship today. We are so glad that you are here with us. Please stand and join together in our call to worship. Good morning. Peter called to the people, inviting them into unity and solidarity in Christ, to break bread together and to worship together. We too hear the call to join the many generations before us, worshiping a God whose love transcends time and age, telling the stories of God's mighty acts in our midst. Young and old, let us praise God together, all of us, young and old, rich and poor, one people united in practice of our faith. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are the head and we are the body. Revive your church and fill us with the same love and passion as the early believers. Give us a persistent hunger for your word, that our lives may be conformed to your teaching. Give us a sincere love for one another, that we may seek opportunities to befriend and serve one another. 
Give us a passion for unity that we may set aside our differences and eat together at a common table. Give us a lifestyle of prayer that you may constantly be on our hearts and minds, guiding what we do and say. Holy Spirit, fall again on your church throughout the world. Manifest your presence among us through signs and wonders. Make us a generous, freely giving people that take care of one another. Transform our worship from religious ritual to joy-filled praise in your presence. Keep us in the world as respected citizens and gracious ambassadors of your kingdom. Holy God, we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let's join our voices for the hymn number 589, The Church of Christ in Every Age. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you guys? Good. Are you so excited for Vacation Bible School that starts tonight? Yes. Oh my goodness, that I think is the loudest I have ever heard you been. And I am so excited too because we get to eat and we get to pray and we get to play together and we get to learn all about how much God loves us. Today in worship, we're going to read from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. And while we read, I have a special job for you. Do you have your listening ears on? Yes. Yes? Awesome. I want you to listen closely to what this passage says about the church and what the people of God do. Are you ready? Okay. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. 
Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. And they continued every day to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So what did you hear with your listening ears? Yeah. Yep, people gathered together to worship God. What did you hear, Addison? Yeah, they broke bread together. They broke their food and shared their food, and they spent time with God. Absolutely. What else did they say in there? They prayed, absolutely. They shared things with each other. They sold all of their things and gave to anybody who had need. They met regularly. They ate together, both at church in the form of Holy Communion and at home, in their homes. They invited people to come and eat with them and visit with them. And most importantly, they praised and loved God and told other people about God's love. And did you hear the very end of that passage? What happened when they did those things? Do you remember? Yeah, people were being saved, and God added to their number, right? The church got bigger. The more we tell other people about God's love, the more we invite them in, the church gets bigger. And God's love expands and grows and multiplies when we share it with other people. The good news is that God always continues to transform our hearts when we worship, when we make a commitment to serve God like the people in the early church in our passage today, when we give away our things in order to meet the needs of others, God shows up. When we are faithful in our ministry, when it's exciting to be a part of what God is doing, God does more than we could ask or imagine. God is always present with us, no matter what. There's never a time in our lives or in our churches or in our ministries that God is not with us. And so when we allow ourselves to show up, when we gather together in worship to love and share with one another, when we devote our lives to God, we are changed in ways that we cannot predict or expect. And God works in our lives and God works through us. So this week, I have a special mission for you while you are doing VBS. I want you to think about the practices of the early church that we heard about, praying and eating together and praising God and worshiping together, all those things we talked about, and I want you to pay attention to where we do them this week. Here's a hint. You'll get to do them at 5.30. That makes it really easy, right? But I want you to keep track of all the times that we do those things, when we gather together and pray and give and serve as we follow Jesus this week. Let's pray a repeat after me prayer. Dear God, God, thank you for loving us and for sending Jesus to show us your love. Help us follow you with our whole lives so we can be changed by your love. Amen. Thanks for coming in, guys. I know you have a fabulous lesson planned. We give thanks for the children among us and for all the things that they have to teach us. And we share together in our joys and in our prayers. Those of you who are in person here have pink prayer sheets. 
And those of you who are not probably received these in email, and if you did not, let us know. A couple of things to highlight there. We give prayers for Colleen Woolweaver, who needs prayer for healing in her hands. For Merlene Sitar's family member who has had COVID three times. For Mike Raguski, who's still recovering from a fall he suffered in June. For Danny and Fela Pytel, who are undergoing a difficult pregnancy, and there's a possibility that the baby may need to be prematurely induced. We lift up prayers for Heidi Feskinen, who is recovering from a heart procedure and is being treated for pneumonia. For Susan Hose, who was home with COVID and is here with us, and we give thanks for healing and recovery. We lift up prayers for Ron Sitar, who is recovering, and for Reverend Molly Brown, who was hospitalized this week with a heart issue at main campus. We also continue to lift up prayers for Don and Carol Bernath, who have moved to Maryville, Tennessee, and are now residing at Asbury Place. And we also lift up prayers for Don as he has entered hospice care. We lift up prayers for the family of Charles Kisner, the youngest brother of Barb Cook's son, who was killed in an auto accident on Friday. And prayers for this community, for all who are ill, for all who are unable to be with us. Let us now enter into prayer with God in the silence of our hearts. Holy God, we come before you today with hearts full of gratitude for all that you have made and all that you have entrusted to us. We come with anxious hearts, with love and compassion for those in need, with our own needs and desires and longings. For all those we have named aloud and those we have named in the silence of our hearts, and those who are known only to you, hear our prayers, gracious God. Look upon us with your mercy. In all the ways that we have failed, let your grace be sufficient. Transform our hearts and our lives so that we may receive and share in your glory. Bless the work of our hands, that we might be the people and the church that you long for us to be. Remind us of our true purpose and our call that comes from you. Inspire us to live out that call wherever we go, wherever you send us. These things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, God has blessed us with many good gifts. And so as we enter into this time of generosity, remembering the ways in which we give back to God, we lift up our time and our talents and our treasure, generously offering what first came from God back to God. Though we are not passing offering plates today, there are lots of ways for you to participate in our offering by giving in the boxes outside in the rear of the sanctuary, by mailing or dropping off a donation to the church office, or by giving online. And so as we remember with thanksgiving all that God has done for us, we turn our hearts in prayer and join together in singing our offertory. Number 349, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus.
living God, let the resurrection of your Son transform our lives. Make us bold in serving you and bringing your good news to other people. Help us to share of ourselves and our possessions with one another, and especially with people in need. Amen. Friends, we have gathered together today for worship and to share in our love of God and with one another, but also to share some important things in the life of the church with all of you. I'd like to invite anyone who's serving currently on our Unified Church Board to stand at your seats, just so we know who you are, and so we can thank you for your continued work. It's okay, you can stand up. And to you all, we say thank you for the work that you do and the stewardship that you provide. And I'll ask those of you who are not joining me up front to please have a seat and invite forward Brett Neff and Ken Shelko and Carolyn Murdoch. Friends, your Unified Church Board has been hard at work and hard at prayer for all of you for the work that we are doing together as community. And I give thanks for their leadership and turn things over to them as we share together. Is it on? Okay, now it is. All right, thank you. Good morning. As you know, my name is Carolyn Murak. And I don't know about you, but I'm getting hungry by looking at all the stuff that's up here. And I look forward to seeing what all the kids have to do for us on next week. Before we get started with the nitty gritty of the financial piece, I'd like to share with you what Pastor Lauren and the board have been doing since January to be better fiscal managers of our money. I know myself when I give, I like to know where my money is going. And I like to know that it's being used to the best that it possibly can be. Anybody else? Okay, so here's just some simple things that we've been doing. When we came back and started with coffee and donuts, that money that was given used to go to campership, now we donated to special projects. That way, the, any type of upkeep or management or maintenance that we need, we can tap into that money. Kids can still go to camp. We have not taken that away, but there are other opportunities for them, so it was kind of a duplication of services. So we thought it was better to move the money to the special projects. We just recently have been using a part-time custodian because we no longer have a full-time one, and that has saved us about over $8,000, so that's a better use of our money. We've been fine-tuning the budget when we look at it monthly to remove some unnecessary costs. For example, we've removed using the yellow pages because how many of you use the yellow pages anymore? And that was a big cost, and really all it did was just send the, uh, whoever was going to click on that to our website, so we thought that was a waste of money. And there were some other simple things that we saw, some bills come in. We really didn't need to use those services anymore, so we reduced that as well. We've recently updated our rental agreement with Lollipop. It's something that is much more mutually beneficial on both sides. That has not been paid attention to since 1997. So thank you, Pastor Lauren, for doing that and making that a better use of the rental space down there. I think it was in May or June we've decided for the board to go green, which means we come with our own electronic copy, which means we don't print out copies anymore, which would be paper waste and wear and tear on the copier. So that was a financial savings as well. Pastor Lauren had mentioned with the weekly updates, that's a better way to keep us informed and that also kind of decreases some paper waste. So that saves us. I don't really have dollar amounts for those things, but we all know, what is it, a penny saved? Is a penny earned? It just helps with the bottom line of our financial situation. We also have some ideas that Pastor Lauren and I have been talking about that we plan to come up in the fall, which is a way for us to be, <clears throat> excuse me, my, my nose is running with all the allergies and all that kind of stuff. With going green with the messenger, getting more people digitally connected, so again, we're not using paper waste and we're not paying all that postage. It keeps us better informed. And also, Pastor Lauren has come up with the idea when we do the directory for our church to do it in-house instead of sending it out. So again, I don't have dollar amounts on those things, but that's just a better way to use our money, money manage our money better, and just make better financial sense. So thank you, Pastor Lauren and the board for making these simple changes to help use our money better and help fiscally manage it better. So with that, I will turn it over to the folks who will give us a better financial number situation of this church.
Good morning. I, I do remember Monday night, we were having a meeting, and of course I was the first one to say, oh, I'll get up and I'll speak, and then I thought, really? <laughs> do I, am I prepared or ready to do that? Well, I'm here, so I'm hopefully going to give you some information that's going to help us all. Um, I have seven points of things that the board is discussing and talking about and looking into that I want to bring to your attention. Um, I wanted to start out by saying that one of the things I often talk to staff at work about is that the only thing constant in life is change. I heard that a lot when I was growing up and I am always telling staff that that's the only thing you can be sure of is that things are going to change. And as we've seen in the last couple of years, especially with COVID and everything we've had to deal with, that it, it definitely change is the one constant. So. I'm here to kind of give you the um, big picture of a lot of the stuff, like I said, seven points that I want to bring up. And we're, we're in the, the modern day of what they call being transparent and giving all the information. So please keep in mind that a some of the things that we're talking about, we've not implemented any of these things. We're looking at them, we're talking about it. So it's, it's an overall sense. We want you to realize that the board is taking it seriously and we're we definitely want to make sure that we're communicating with the congregation so that everybody knows exactly where we are and what's happening. I mean, obviously, there's some things that you can see by the number of people that we have on Sunday that things have changed over the years. But these are points that we discussed at our last meeting, and we felt it was, it was important to do it as soon as possible and bring it before the congregation. So first of all, we have a lot of designated funds. And one of the things we're trying to do as the board, and we asked Jill to assist us with this, is to look at all those, those designated funds and see if there's a possibility of putting them towards the general budget. Um, because Brett probably could give you a better number of how many there are, but we thought this, is, this was a resource where we could go and try and get some other monies to keep the budget going. We've also asked the uh, PPE, the parish pastor relations committee to kind of also look at staff and salaries and the, the the overall picture of that what it might look like in the future what it looks like currently what changes might be done or have to be done the board um, spoke on the uh, apportionment payments that the church makes um, I need to, to specify and, and make the point ahead of time that any monies that are given to the congregation or to the church specifically for apportionments would not be affected with and anything and they will always be given as apportionments but the board has at this point decided that we wanted to use those funds in a different way and possibly use them for the general fund to keep the church um, open at this point we've paid thirty seven thousand dollars in apportionments already we're paying about $6,000 a month, but we felt at this point it, it was essential that we um, redirected that money to be used for the general budget for the church. Um, currently, for the 2022 budget, we have a projected conservative shortfall of $54,000 with a higher end possible shortfall of 80,000. That's if nothing changes, it's all projected. It can change. But that's kind of the numbers we're looking at. Um, 54,000 I would say is about 10% if my numbers are right. So with that being said, we're putting a lot of energies into looking into the 2023 budget and how that might be set up and how might look for the overall church. Um, it has to be a lot different than the current budget because like I said, we're in this, in a current situation where we really have to figure out how we're gonna make things, bring things together. So one of the things that the board needs to be responsible for is we need to consider the, um, the church itself. And the church is the congregation, the people, the facility, all us around here. And it would be, um, it's Im important for us to consider all things. So we, we actually had broke, opened up a discussion as to the appropriateness of this facility. And we're looking into 
what would happen and how things would go if another facility would be better meet our, meet our needs and what we, how we move to the future. We've been here 150 years in Macedonia. I hope we we're, gonna, well, we're gonna be here another 150 years if I can help it. And, um, but it, change, as I said at the beginning, is constant. So we'll, we, we're looking into that. Nothing's been decided. We've also kind of wanted to start the conversation about a merger and see what that would look like also. The last point for the seven that I'm bringing up is that we've asked the finance task force to take a good look at income and expenses and what can, we be, what can be done and we want to empower them to look at those things. Now we've asked them to bring back any, the finance task force to bring back any recommendations to the board so that they can vote on them or make a decision. So those are the seven points that I have. Um, we, we plan to have an, an open microphone and also online if people want to ask questions as we go through. So we'll have a microphone to go around um, if you have a question. But for now, I'm going to turn it over to Brett so he can add a couple things and then we'll be glad to take questions. Good morning, all. As Ken said, we're going to give you all an opportunity to ask questions. We want to make this as interactive as possible. Pastor, I don't think you're preaching a sermon today, is that correct? Okay. Um, I want to echo what Carolyn and Kent have said already. We're not here this morning as the UCB, the Unified Church Board, to instill fear. We merely want to share the knowledge that we've gotten as a Unified Church Board and share it with you so that you understand the current financial situation of the church. I think most of you know me, and I don't know the exact number, but I think I'm going on almost 45 years as a member of the church. Uh, I know there's a few of you out there, probably many, who have been here longer than that, but not a whole lot. So I've seen the church, I've been around the church, I've watched it grow, I've watched it expand, and I've watched it shrink. And unfortunately, in these trying times, that's what's happening right now. The congregation, the numbers have declined. And any of you that understand finances, by the way, just a clarification, I'm not an economist, I'm not a, an accountant, I'm not a financial guy. I'm a real estate agent, a contractor, and an engineer who happens to love numbers. Uh, I understand what's happening, and I'm just trying to share a few things with you to paint a picture for you of what the future of this church looks like. And as Ken said, we all want to be here for another 150, whether it's in this current piece of land or whether it's somewhere else. Two of the items I want to share with you um, are, are two of the larger costs that the church is facing. Uh, one of which, and, and you all know it, it's, it's before us as we sit here today, the air conditioning. Um, we've been putting a Band-Aid on the rooftop units for several years. Well, we're at the point where those Band-Aids no longer work and we need to repair those units. Uh, the UCB has gotten a cost from a, a reputable commercial HVAC contractor to do that and we're looking at about $35,000, $32,000. The other cost, which is, again, very obvious if you're paying attention when you pull into the church parking lot, is that church parking lot. It's in grave disrepair. Crack ceiling, uh, overcoat ceiling, the parking lot is going to cost us around $160,000. I did say that correctly, $160,000. Um, we've had some, some thoughts from some of the folks on the UCB board and others about can we close down a portion of the parking lot, only use half of it. We could do that, but that doesn't make financial sense. The parking lot's gonna just continue to be in further disrepair. Those cracks will take on water, the water will allow it to heave, freeze and thaw, and it'll create more problems to the point where we'll have to just tear up the whole parking lot. So the 32,000 for the AC, the 160,000 for the, for the parking lot, you're looking at a couple hundred thousand dollars. Those are the two large ones that we've identified, there's others. These are the items that we bring before you just to pray about, to consider so that you understand uh, and it kind of puts some uh, ideas and, and uh, knowledge behind the information that Carolyn and Kent shared with you before as we look at trying to balance the deficit uh, and, the, and the budget that we have. While we are not currently operating in the red, our forecast shows that that will happen, as they said, if nothing changes. So again, we bring this before you to pray about, to think about. If you have questions, 
Paul Pendleton, I think, is in the back with a microphone. We're going to walk around. If you have questions that we are able to answer today, we'll be happy to do that for you. If we can't, we will bring those before the UCB board. We will get an answer and we'll share them with you uh, as we're able. I don't have anything else. Carolyn, anything? Kent, Pastor? Paul, if anyone has questions, uh, either online through Facebook or here in the church, please feel free, raise your hand. We're happy to entertain those questions. Marilyn, I see your hand up in the back. How did I know you were going to ask the first question? You talk about a merger. Any more information on who it would be with, or is it just a thought that you're considering? Sure. The question, well, everyone heard it. The, the question is uh, what knowledge we have or information we have on a merger. Very, very early stages, and we don't have any information on that as far as who it would be. We are not the only church experiencing uh, these hard times because of the pandemic. Um, it was just a thought that came up at the UCB uh, group to talk to our neighboring United Methodist churches and see if, if there's others out there who might consider forming a larger United Methodist church in a specific community. That's, that's as far as that's gotten. There's no specifics, no details on any one church. Again, we haven't even reached out to any of our neighboring United Methodist churches to see if that's a possibility. We're, we're trying to throw all ideas and possibilities out there. Another hand over here. This is not a question per se. Uh, uh, what I'd like uh, for Kent to clarify what apportionments are. Apportionments, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, and I'm not an accountant either, so. Are you asking for a definition of what apportionments are or, or specific numbers? Okay, let Pastor yeah, handle that yeah, one. Please, thank you, thank, thank you. As a United Methodist Church, we pay apportionments, which are calculated based on our expenses that we have each year. There's a couple year lag time on that, but our apportionments are funds that we give. It's a sort of like a tithe of what we give to the United Methodist Church here in East Ohio. Those things help pay the bishop's salary, your district superintendent's salaries, the work that the conference is doing, a lot of them go to mission to support the general church. They do things like when Linda went to Liberia, they helped send her there. They send missionaries and flood buckets that you all have prepared to places all over the world. So what we want you to know about apportionments is that we don't take these things lightly, that these obligations that we have support the work of the United Methodist Church in this community, but also all over the world. And so while those funds are to do lots of things, they help train clergy, they help provide pension and health care for our retirees, some of those other things that I've mentioned, they are important pieces of our obligations to the church. And so it's never a first opportunity for us to say, we have to look at how we're spending and how we're doing things. It's not a thing that we want to do, but it is a thing that as we become aware of the shortfall that we have, it's something that we're considering and thinking of doing as we move forward for a time to redirect those funds to our budget to make our expenses meet in the hopes that one day, very soon, we will be meeting those apportionment payments in full again. I can provide any clarification further on that, but the accounting ledger on our income and expense statement has the apportionments for the East Ohio Conference broken down into five categories. World service, connection support, minister pension and hospi hospitalization, clergy support fund, and an education fund. Those are the five categories that the apportionments that our church provides, and I think all churches provide through apportionments, uh, go to. I don't have percentages. I would assume it's 20% for each of those categories. Karen. Good morning. My name is Karen Powell Fike, and um, my husband and I were here and went, left this church and went into ministry. And then, uh, unfortunately, Jim died. And when <coughs> he died, it was the apportionments, part of those apportionments, that made it a better situation for me. The conference came forward and 
uh, paid for my hospitalization, and they also gave me, uh, they have, they invest this money that they receive, and they can go ahead and uh, support widows of pastors. And I just want you to know that it, we use it locally too, and you support your pastors. And I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. I have two, uh, two questions. Uh, <laughs> the one is uh, if uh, apportionments are paid, will that affect our pastor's uh, retirement fund? I think that was changed that it would not be tied to uh, uh, apportionments. That would be my first question. That's a question, and I really appreciate that question. Um, my family appreciates that question. No, our, our current apportionments are not tied to your particular pastor's fund. What they do is apportionments are pooled to the, the, the conference, and then they support those funds. But you also pay into pension and hospitalization for this pastor. Thank you. My second question is, as uh, many of us are aware, there's been some changes. Uh, it isn't a merger. It changes in regard to how the United Methodist Church is uh, going to be functioning in the future. We call it a split, a split in the church. And to some, it's very offensive to talk about the split. And uh, uh, what it amounts to is the United Methodist Church has developed a, a new section of church. It's called the Global Methodist Church, not the United Global Methodist Church. It's the Global Methodist Church, which takes in the global... For a second. Um, today we're here to talk about this, congregational, this congregation's finances and a financial update provided for the congregation. We are not talking about a church split. We are not talking about disaffiliation. I understand that that's something you're very passionate about. Um, but to be clear, the United Methodist Church is not splitting. There <laughs> is a church that has started its own church. It is called the Global Methodist Church. It is not a church split. The Gen General Conference of the United Methodist Church has not met and will not meet until 2024. But we are here today to talk about how this congregation moves forward together and not to talk about split. So I thank you and also respectfully ask that we not go there today. Thank you, and I respectfully would come back to you and say it does have to do with finances because if this church splits, and don't kid anybody, you're talking about a split, uh, gay or straight. If you want to go that direction, we can do that, but not today. That's another time for another day. And I'm very angry about this because the church leadership and the... <laughs> uh, This does affect the church because if that split occurs, it makes your financial picture even worse. So you need to be discussing that uh, as soon as you can because it's going to affect all of us very badly and affect the income of the church very badly because if that occurs, it's going to pe people have to make a decision. Do they go to the global church or do they go to the United Methodist Church? Now, the United Methodist Church won't be the same because they'll change their doctrine to ex get, expect the, the gay pride situation. And that's all I have to say about that. But you need to open your eyes. You need to get information about what's happening to this church because it's a serious problem. And, there, and this is all about love. And that's another situation. There is information about disaffiliation that is available on the conference website, and I'm happy to answer individual questions about that as well. A couple of things regarding this church. Uh, I want to make sure that everybody who's 70 and a half knows that 
when you take the minimum distribution from your IRA, if it goes directly to your church, it does not count on your income for income taxes. And that, for some people, can be very important and be of great benefit to the church. Secondly, I was thinking about, I don't know how much we would pay to for snow removal and for lawn services, and perhaps some of that, there might be people in the church who would be willing to donate or take less money than we would perhaps pay to people uh, for the companies, and I don't know what that is. Another thing, I wish Jill were here because I don't have a clue how much is in designated funds. I know I have seen lists that there's tremendous numbers. I know with Open M, we have a couple thousand dollars, but you know, five times a year, we provide lunches for Open M, and we do other things for it, so I try to, to be open and think, my church is extremely important to me, but the funds that we collect for Open M, we use for Open M. So I don't know if there are funds that are just out there that haven't been used for a long time, but it certainly is something for us to look into. Um, I wonder, in our active congregation, what percentage of people have no computer access? We have l tremendous loyalty of a lot of people like that, and I don't know how we best communicate with them and let them know that we really care about them because they are the uh, strong feet of our congregation. That's all for now. I'll answer a couple of those questions. Uh, the, the budget numbers in our income and expense statement for snow plowing is $4,000, I'm sorry, $6,080. I can't tell you how much of that we spend. I don't know whether we pay by the push or whether it's a contractual obligation for the entire year, but it's about $6,000. Outside maintenance and lawn care is in the ballpark of $4,000. And any of you that own businesses or work in businesses who look for volunteers all the time know how hard it is to find volunteers. The same people are the ones doing all the work all the time. So with relation to the question you asked about volunteers for, for lawn mowing, sorry, it's not going to happen. It, it won't be consistent. You just can't expect us to do that. It's not going to happen. OK, I'm going to jump in. Can you hear me? Go ahead, Paul. Got a couple from the online community. so. Um, one is a comment. It just says, uh, so everyone is aware, the church directory doesn't cost the church anything. So, and the other question or comment is, I guess it's a question. Um, on your number one and number two priority, this person seems to be concerned that we haven't addressed the roof on the older portion of the building. So... Is that a number three, I guess, is the question. It absolutely is. And I purposefully left that off because that's another major expense. Uh, a tear off and a replace of that roof would be easily in the neighborhood of what the cost is that we're looking for for the parking lot. So it's, it's down the road a little ways, but yes, we don't currently have any leaks that uh, we need to address. So that is, is being pushed a little bit. But I know Al and his team are, are well aware of that. Go ahead, Al. That mic's not on. Try it again, Al. Testing. There you go. As far as the snow plowing goes, uh, last year when we took a look at the contract, uh, we had already reduced the amount of plowing we were doing to reduce the cost by over $1,000 from the previous year, OK? We did sign on to a contract for three years, kind of just looking forward to what things were costing and hoping to keep the price down, which was the right decision to make because salt has gone through the roof, fuel has gone to the roof. Most things we get surcharged for fuel expenses and stuff like that. This gentleman's keeping the cost the same. Our snowplow guy is our landscaping guy also, 
and kept the cost of cutting grass the same as well. So we're doing our best to keep costs under control. Also, quickly, Carolyn, I do have the list of the accounting fund balances for our designated funds. There's 29 of those funds. If you'd like to see them after the service, I will be happy to share with you the numbers in each of those accounts. Um, I don't want to get into details right now, but if, if anyone has questions regarding those funds, see me and I'll be happy to share them with you. The leaders of each of those groups is going to be approached by Joe Marlowe um, to discuss the funds that are in there and what the uses could be for and if, if some of those dollars, as we mentioned earlier, could be used for the general fund. And if they can't, they won't, just so you all know that. want to be really clear that we are committed to communicating with all members of the congregation, those who have computer access and those who don't. We certainly have folks who don't have computer access, who can't, who choose not to, and we certainly respect that. We also have folks who are joining us online who only ever join us online. And so we give thanks for the, the development of technology that allows us to connect with folks, and we promise not to forget about folks who choose not to or cannot use technology as well. Any other questions? Paul, any more online questions? All right, hearing none, thank you all. Again, if there's questions, there is a, a large number of the UCB uh, folks here today in church. See one of us, we'll be happy to chat with you in a little bit more detail uh, and share with you some of our other thoughts um, and, and what's ha happening with these numbers. Thank you. I'll issue my thanks to the folks who led us this morning for the questions that you all asked, for the folks who, on, who are online who joined us as well, and invite us to be in prayer together. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for your presence among us, for the ways that you work in us and through us. God, open our hearts to hear your call for us, to be generous and good stewards, to care well for each other, to listen always for your call to be the church in this community and in the world. In Christ's name we pray, amen. If you look in your hymnals, and you don't have to right now because we're going to turn to a different hymn in just a second, but hymn number 558 is a song that I learned as a child, and it's called We Are the Church. And it says, you are the church. I am the church. We are the church together. And friends, we are the church together. At our staff meeting this week, I shared with the staff that this is our church. This is our home. And one of the things that we are called to do is to care well for it and for each other, to be generous in our giving and in our serving, because it helps us fulfill the mission that God has given to this unique place. And so I'll invite you all to do what I invited our staff first to do, to help care for this place. If you see some trash, make it your personal mission to pick it up. If you see something that needs to be done, do it or let us know so we can make sure that it's done. Because friends, this is our church together. And God has given us this place so that we can care for one another and care for the community around us. And with that, I'll stop preaching and invite you to turn to number 618, let us break bread together before we share in communion.
And if you're joining us in person and have not picked up communion elements, the Pendletons are in the back and would be happy to bring you some if you just raise your hand. Got a couple up here in the front. As we join together in the sacrament of Holy Communion, we invite you to turn to page seven in your hymnals for the communion liturgy. We also invite you to take this moment to peel back that film on the top to expose your wafer and to pull open the foil to expose your grape juice, but to hold on to your elements until directed so that we can receive the sacrament together today. Beloved Christ, our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were still sinners and proved God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through your word you created all things and called them good. And in you we live and move and have our being. When we fell into sin, you did not desert us. You made covenant with your people Israel and spoke through prophets and teachers. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. And so with all the people on earth and the whole company of heaven, we praise your name and join together in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, God, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, who called you Father. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace a people as your own and fill them with a longing for peace that would last and justice that would not fail. In Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever. You raised Jesus from the dead, who now reigns with you in glory, and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup again, giving thanks to God. He shared it around the table with his friends. He said, drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. And we proclaim together the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Holy God, pour out your spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, so that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the whole world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, 
All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, you and I are beloved children of God, and this table belongs to the Lord. In the United Methodist Church, we serve bread and grape juice so that all may feel safe and secure in participating at Jesus' table. We invite all to participate, whether a church member here or nowhere at all, who seek a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. Come to the table and be fed. The bread in which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Friends, at this time, I invite you to share in the gifts of Holy Communion at your seat. This is the body and blood of Christ broken and shed for you because God loves you. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, I invite you to join us in our closing hymn, standing as you are able, number 399, Take My Life. Friends, go from this place today, having been fed at God's table, to remember that we are the church together. Go from this place to remember that God fills us with love and peace, that we have a part and a role to participate in Christ's kingdom. Go now to love and serve the Lord in all that you do. Amen. Amen.